so many awards, you've sold so many albums. You know, if, if the fourth, if the next album doesn't sell 10 million copies, would you find yourself sort of disappointed? Will I be disappointed? Um, well, you know what I mean. How, how, do you, how do you keep topping yourself all the time? Well, I don't sit there and say, okay, I'm going to do this. This is going to be much better than that. Even though with each project I do, I try to do my best, and I feel that I grow. And once I have nothing, there's no growth left. I feel there's nothing else left to give. That's when I will quit. But I feel I still have a lot in me that I want to do and I want to give. Um, I just go in and I do what I feel in my heart. And if it does better than the next project, great. That's great. But you can't let it get you down if it's not as successful as the last. That doesn't make you a failure in any sense of the word. I think you're a failure when you give up. That's when you have failed. But you don't ever give up, ever. No matter what anyone says, right? They can't give up. Janet Jackson was born Janet Damita Joe Jackson on May 16, 1966 in Gary, Indiana. The youngest of nine children born to Catherine Esther and Joseph Walter Jackson. She grew up in the affluence of a show business family. Her five brothers, Jackie, Tito, Marlon, Jermaine, and Michael signed a contract with Motown Records in 1968 and would go on to rule the charts as the Jackson Five with such hits as I Want You Back, The Love You Saved, ABC, and Dancing Machine. In late 1969, Miss Jackson took her daughters, Ribby, Latoya, and Janet, as well as the youngest son, Randy, to join her husband in Los Angeles, where they moved to further the band's career. Janet Jackson first appeared on stage in April 1974, singing and doing impressions alongside brother Randy in the Jackson family's Las Vegas act. In 1976, she appeared on the Jacksons, a summer replacement television show. Her performance earned her the attention of a producer who hired her to play Penny a regular on the TV comedy series, Good Times, from 1977 to 1979. She continued her television work in the short-lived A New Kind of Family in 1979. The sitcom Different Strokes from 1984 to 1985 and the teen drama Fame from 1984 to 1985 based at a New York City Performing Arts High School. During her time on fame, she was able to break away from her family's supervision while on location in New York. In September 1984, she eloped with James DeBarge, a musician in the group DeBarge, also on the Motown label. Jackson's family disapproved of DeBarge, and the marriage was brief as she applied for an annulment in January of 1985, which was granted the following November. How old were you when? Sure. Janet's first album, self titled Janet Jackson, was released on September 21st, 1982. Two years later, in 1984, her album titled Dream Street was released. She reemerged in 1986 with her breakthrough album, Control, which featured five singles that topped the rhythm and blues charts, including top 10 pop hits, What Have You Done For Me Lately, Nasty, The Pleasure Principle, When I Think Of You, and Let's Wait A While. Now, since um, a lot has been made in the press about you sort of, I mean, the word control constantly comes up, um, taking control of your career, how do you feel when you look back at things that you did before that? I'm, 
I'm just glad that I, I made that decision to take control of my life. I think that's the only way you can really have great success is by taking control of your own destiny. And looking back, there were a lot of times when I wanted to say things, but I would keep my mouth shut because I was so young, thinking that they would say, well, what does this, this little kid know? So I don't think that's the way to do it, but I'm glad that I did finally make that decision. Now, what do you do now? Do you, just, uh, do you have a, a manager that you tell what to do, or do you just come out with it all? Well, actually, my father was my manager for 11 years. So, <laughs> tell him. <laughs> but we're, we're not, he doesn't manage me anymore, so pretty much I'm doing everything on my own, along with John McClain, who's one of the vice presidents at AM. Now, do you, ever, do you ever wish that you'd been one of those sort of 60s Motown singers? Do you think they had a better time than I'm having right now? Yeah. Gee, I really don't know, but I'm really having a great time. With my what life. do you enjoy most about everything that you're doing at the moment? Which things do give, give you the most pleasure? Making the videos is one, and just the, the warmth and the love, the energy that you feel from the, the, the kids, the audience, the fans. I think that's really wonderful. That really makes me feel good inside. Now, you've been working with Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam. Mm -hmm. what, what's that like? They are two of the most craziest guys in the studio. They, they're such characters. They're so funny, and they're two of my favorite guys we had so much fun in the studio i was there for a month and a half it took us two weeks to complete the album the rest of the time we fooled around and had a lot of fun so it was it was really a lot of fun they're 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 perfectionists in the studio but yet they know how to have fun with it so that it won't be so stiff her fierce independence struck a chord with the youth of the day and jackson rose to a level of stardom that rivaled that of michael jackson the most famous of her brothers. Her collaborations with the production team of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, produced bold, beat-heavy, catchy songs that defined the punch and power of 1980s dance and pop music. Jackson returned in 1989 with her most diverse work, Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation 1814. The album delivered seven top 10 hit singles, including Miss You Much, Escapade, All Right, Come Back to Me, and Love Would Never Do Without You. Jackson continued to enjoy worldwide popularity and critical acclaim in the 1990s with the albums Janet 1993, Design of a Decade 1995, and The Velvet Rope 1997. Between the release of All For You 2001, which continue in the sensual vein of Janet, and Demita Joe 2004. CD, Velvet Rope. Now, what's the what's the deal with that title? What does that come from? Well, God, it's a, a really long, uh, it takes a, a good while to explain, so I'll just try to, the Velvet Rope is, is the need I feel that we all have to feel special, yeah. and this need brings out different sides in us. It can bring out the best or the worst in us, and and just through my life, I've seen different Velvet Ropes, uh, different ropes put up. It, it, it um, separates us from others. It, it doesn't allow others to get to know who we are, and it also doesn't allow us to get to know ourselves, this rope, so... Within this album, it's putting that velvet rope down and allowing the people to get to know who I really am. Oh, that's really In addition to her music career, Jackson continued to act. In 1993, she made her film debut in Poetic Justice, which also starred Tupac Shakur. Jackson's star continued to rise until an incident at the Super Bowl. The halftime show in 2004 caused a slight falter. During a live performance with Justin Timberlake, Jackson's right breast was exposed during a costume reveal that both parties said was an accident. The wardrobe malfunction caused an uproar among both fans and the Federal Communications Commission. Jackson subsequently failed to appear at the Grammy Awards and dropped out of a television project in which she was to play Lena Horn at the elder actress request. Let's just 
let's hit this straight on. How do you feel about the Super Bowl incident? How do I feel? Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's for me, it's the past. I moved on, um, and I'm looking forward to the, the, you know, the album being released, and hopefully everyone will like it. So it's it's been really nice. Do you feel that America overreacted to the entire situation? Uh, yeah, I think there are more important things in the world going on right Definitely. now. Definitely. Right. You know, with, with AIDS and war and homeless and famine, and they're going to focus on that. So, mm -hmm. so we got to ask right here. Now, was it a wardrobe malfunction or was it not? We just got to ask. Are you asking me if it was a stunt? Yes. No, it wasn't. It was, it was okay. truly an accident. Okay. And how did you get past it? Like, after there was so much media, the FCC media has changed a lot. You know, the, the, the strength of my family and my friends and, and my own inner strength. Mm -hmm. and no, the, no. Do you, do, you, do you feel that it would it would have garnered so much attention if it was like, say, a Britney or a Madonna or somebody like that? <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> what and do I, just, I think? I told I think, you I don't know. I what think, do you well, think? I, I mean, I think because, you know, coming from the family, coming from being African-American, that they put a lot of emphasis on it. Do you, you agree? Or? Quite possibly. Quite yeah. possibly. Okay. Now, if you could go back to that day, would you change anything? Is there anything you would change about that performance? I, oh, I would prefer it not to happen. Okay. I mean, uh, that's what I would change about that performance. Okay. And we had a great time. Jackson persevered with both her music and screen career with 2004's Demita Joe. And it was followed up by 20YO in 2006, which featured the Nelly track, Call On Me. Then in 2008, Jackson released the number one album, Discipline, a well-received affair that featured Feedback, a dashing disco number calling for diversity on the dance floor. Unbreakable 2015, billed as a comeback album, used contemporary electronic arrangement to bolster the velvety vocals that had established Jackson as an R&B star. The Unbreakable album reunited her with producers Jam and Lewis. Independently released on her own label, Rhythm Nation, Unbreakable became Jackson's seventh number one album making her just one of three pop artists along with Barbara Streisand and Bruce Springsteen to have chart-topping albums in every decade dating back to the 1980s. In 2011, Jackson released the book True You, A Journey to Finding and Loving Yourself, which dealt candidly with ideas around body image and her struggles with weight. Co-written by journalist David Ritz, the book became a number one New York Times bestseller. Her later movie credits included Why Did I Get Married in 2007 and its sequel, Why Did I Get Married 2 in 2010, both written and directed by Tyler Perry. She also appeared in For Colored Girls in 2010, Perry's adaption of Into Saki Shange's 1975 theater piece For Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough. Her life and career were the subject of the four part docuseries Janet Jackson in 2022. In 2019, Jackson was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That year, she also enjoyed a four-month residency at the Park MGM Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas and reissued Rhythm Nation to celebrate its 30-year anniversary. Janet took to Instagram to make a live announcement about her 2023 North America Arena and Theater Tour. She said, quote, I'm going back on tour, and yes, we will be together again, said the singer with a smile, noting that the name of the outing is Together Again. She quotes, 
I miss you much and I cannot wait to see you, she added. Success is doing what you love. I think regardless of the money, doing what you love, being happy, that's success to me. Um, having someone that you love there with you the whole way, that's success to me. Um, being happy, that's truly success to me. Don't forget to comment below. Also, like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.